Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Mosai and Christ Bless. Again, this is me, Captain Gideon, and to my right. Soldier Nation. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. The title today is Care for Your Nation. Care for Your Nation. Because a lot of time, as we see in the world, we don't care for one another. It's all about me, 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 me. All right? So let's see in the Bible if our forefathers behave the same way. Let's start with 1 Ezra chapter 4, verse 42. The book of 1 Ezra chapter 4 and verse 42. Then said the king unto him, Ask what thou wilt more than is appointed in the, in the writing, and we will give it thee, because thou art found wisest. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt sit next to, next me, and shall be called my cousin. So the king asked over, but ask me anything you want, and I'll give it to you. You would sit next to me, and you would be called my cousin. That, that's, that's huge, right? Let's continue reading and see. Then said he unto the king, Remember thy vow which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem mm -hmm. in the day when thou camest to thy kingdom and to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Jerusalem, which Cyrus set apart when he vowed to destroy Babylon and to send them again thither. Mm -hmm. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple, which the Edomites burned when Judea was made Who desolate. Them? Which the Edomites... Edom always got something to say with our destruction, okay? The Edomites burned the temple during the Persian reign. When Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Mm -hmm. And now, O Lord the King, that is that, this is that which I require and which I desire of thee. And this is the princely liber liberality proceeding from thyself. I desire therefore that thou make good the vow, the performance whereof with thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the King of heaven. So you see that? Zerubbabel did not want all, all the, uh, how you say, all the glitter, all the shiny things, all the wealth. No, he wanted the king to make good with his vow. What was the vow? To rebuild Jerusalem. That's what he wanted. Now, t today, when you look at today, it's the same thing. We have a lot of leaders in Israelite nations. Are they looking to rebuild their nations? Or are they accepting the gold? And the money that the uh, that that the so-called Edomite system is giving them, they'd rather get rich with them and their family, and then neglect their people. Right. That's a selfish attitude to have. Our forefathers did not do that. He could have been well off. He said, "Nope, King. Remember that vow you made. Uphold that vow. That's what I want from you." What verse was that? Verse forty-six. We on forty-six. Read on. Then Darius the king stood up and kissed him. And wrote letters for him unto all the treasurers and lieutenants and captains and governors, and they that they should safely convey on their own way both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. So the king accept his uh, his plea, and the king sent letters to go do do exactly what uh, Zerubbabel had asked him. Read. He wrote letters also unto the lieutenants that were in Celesyria. In Phenis, mm -hmm. and unto them in Libanus, that they should bring cedar wood from Libanus unto Jerusalem. Because Le Lebanon got the best cedar wood. That's what they say, the cedars of Lebanon. Even on their flag, that's, that's, the, that's the emblem that's on their flag, the cedar tree. Best wood. Read. And that they should build the city with him. Build what? The city with him. Okay. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm up into Jewry. Concerning their freedom, that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, nor treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors. So, based on uh, Zerubbabel's character, you, you see that instead of accepting the wealth for himself, he required something that would benefit all his people. How many people you know today that's asking for things that would benefit the whole nation? Damn one. Very, very few. You understand? <clears throat> Read. Verse 50. And that all the country 
which they hold should be free without tribute, and that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews, which then they held. So, actually, the king gave more than we, what he asked. He just asked to be to, for Jerusalem to be rebuilt. But guess what? Even the cities that the, the, the them Edomites took from us, the king ordered, uh, ordered them to give it back. The king gave the Israelite their freedom. He said, "Do we not um, the, the 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 how you say the the collectors are not supposed to force the um, penetrate their houses and, and ask them for for the tax or or, or why not? Okay, so that's what Zerubbabel did for us, right? And let's look at another person. Get, let's go to Hebrews eleven. Let's look at Moses. Because a lot of us, we are well off, living a good life. And guess what? We don't give a damn about what's happening to our people. We couldn't care less. But let's see if that's the characters of our forefathers in the Bible. Read. Verse 23. 24. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Stop. You understand what it is to be the sons of Pharaoh's daughter? That You're the prince. The closest example we could give you right now is coming to America, number one. How a prince is treated. Anything he wants, whatever he wants, whenever he wants it, nobody can say no to him. And pay attention to something. In Egypt, a pharaoh was considered a god, right? So what is the son of a god? <laughs> Another god. So people worship Moses. So in all this splendor, all this glorious kingdom he's living, li having the time of his life. When he came of age, because as he's growing up, he sees the atrocity that, uh, that, that the Israelites are going through. He sees the pain and the anguish that they, they're going through. And that bothered the spirit. So when he came of age, he chose to be what? He didn't want to be an Egyptian no more. He didn't want to be called the prince of Egypt. Because he knew he was, because he's, he's, most of made it that his mother raised him. So he knew he was an Israelite. So he refused to be called the prince of Egypt. Read. Verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Stop. This is the this is a section right here. A lot of us who are rich, we cannot come to term with yet. We cannot see ourselves become a regular person. We in love with the stardom. We in love with have uh, having 25 cars and only using one. We in love having a house that has 50 rooms, 100 bathrooms. For what? So Moses denied all that and chose rather to suffer affliction because when he ran from Egypt, he went what? In the desert. That means he, he suffered thirst, hunger. You understand? And he went to live with Jethro. When he lived with Jethro, you think he was living there for free? No, he had, he had to put in work. So he went from being up there to being very low. Did he die? No, he lived a regular life, eat just like everybody else. But some of us refuse to let go of, of, of the status that we have on this planet in order for us to serve the Most High God. Because you know once you get involved in this, many doors will be closed for you. So you're scared. But pick up the spirit of our forefathers and do what's right. Read verse 25 again. Verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God mm -hmm. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Then to enjoy what? Enjoy pleasures what? of sin for a season. The, the, the pleasures that you have on this planet, the, the red carpet, the, the after parties, the, the popping bottles in the club, the orgies, whatever it is that you do, the drugs, whatever the, uh, the lifestyle that you are living, it's only going to endure for a season. Because there will come a time, where, a time where none of that will exist anymore. So why should you put yourself through this? Yes, sin is pleasurous. Otherwise, people wouldn't do it. That's why they keep doing it. People find great pleasure in doing drugs. People find great pleasures in having orgies. People find great pleasures in doing whatever sin that they're in, involved in. But Moses understood something. The pleasures of sins only last, last, last for a season. What happened to Egypt? It lasted for a season. What happened to Babylon? A season. What happened to the Greek and the Persian? A season. What happened to Rome for a season? These people had great a great time on earth. So what you think is going to happen to Babylon? A season. In a day just like today, it'll come to an end. Those are the things you need to understand. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3. 
For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, mm -hmm. how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ did what? Died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ came down, left all this glorious kingdom. For what? To die for our sin. You got to think about that. To show you, in this life, sacrifices always got to be made if you, wanna, if you want to uh, achieve this kingdom. Christ made the sacrifice so that we can have eternal life. He could have stayed up there, man, the hell with these Negroes, man. Right. I'm up there chilling, angels bowing down to me. Like before he died, what did he say? I have a legion of angels I could just call on. Mm -hmm. But because he loved us so much, he chose to put his life down for us. That's the same kind of love we got to have for, towards one another. Where we sacrifice ourselves for our people, which is what the Israelites are doing in the streets all day, every day. Teaching the word. You understand? We have certain jobs we let go. We have certain lifestyle we let go. Why? Because we care for our people. Because if you don't care for your people, you're not going to, uh, how you say, sacrifice yourself in order for them to have understanding of the scriptures so they can have eternal life. If they take heed to the Bible. Because at the end of the day, we can sacrifice our life and teach. But guess what? You have to take the step in changing. Read. Verse 4. No, read read verse 3 again. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you mm -hmm. first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So he died for our, our sins. Un undeserving people, but Christ gave his life for us, right? Give me um, uh, Matthew 26. We're going to go to verse 52. Matthew 26, verse 52. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they... Excuse me, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I can now, cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? So, Peter wanted to fight for Christ. But had, Peter, had Christ allowed Peter to do that, what would have happened? We wouldn't get salvation, because Christ had to die. So, Christ had people on earth ready to fight for him. He had angels ready to fight for him. But he laid down his life so that we can have eternal life. That's caring for your people. He has legion. Read verse 53 again. Verse 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? So Christ knew that he could get legion of angels, and Peter, his apostles, could fight for him as well. You think they had the sword for no reason? And you know he had to be a marksman because he cut that brother ear sh clean off. Not that brother. He he cut that soldier's ear clean off. That's precision. Mm. Swing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a warning. Like your next step, bro, you're losing your head. Mm. But Christ said, nah, don't do that. Let's see why. Verse 54. 54. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That thus it must be. See that? But scripture had to be feel, fulfilled. Christ had to die. Because if Christ didn't die, then guess what? He couldn't, he couldn't graft in the northern kingdom. You understand? Because they would be lost in their idol worshiping. You understand? Go to John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. The book of John, chapter 15, and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You see that? No greater love than for, for uh, a man has for, for him to lay down his life for a friend. Christ laid down his life for us. You understand? Zerubbabel refused to accept the gold and the, and, and the money, you understand, from the king. Instead, he asked for our well-being, right? Let's go to Nehemiah uh, 1. We're going to read verse 4 and 5. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4 and the, 5. The book of Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. See that? Nehemiah wept and fast and prayed before the God of the heaven. Read. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. So Nehemiah said, prayed and beseeched God to have uh, mercy, you understand, for everyone that keepeth the commandment. 
So in our prayers, in our way of living, it has to always be about our people. We got to care for our people. Because if we don't care for our people, who's going to do so? When you look at the other nations, what do they do? Lock us in jail, give us bad food, bad education, bad everything. Right. You understand? So for those of you guys who's in a higher position on this planet, look into this book and see how our forefathers behave uh, towards their people. Those who are in position to help. How did, what did they do? They sacrificed themselves for the people. Okay, so we exhort you. We pray that you hear this message and then change your ways and stop living a la la lavish lifestyle and help your people for real, for real. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth